I'll just wait for the slides to appear. Hopefully I can move the slides from here. So this is my disclosure. I had been contracted by Novo Nordisk for this session. And what we'll try to understand is when you take uh, uh, the ITEC ASP into the real world, what exactly happens? And Arise is a prospective real world study of ITEC ASP. So the analogy I give usually is if you have a Ferrari and you're driving it in the F1 circuit, it's an entirely different scenario. Everything is in a controlled environment. So if you take your Ferrari and take it out uh, in the city traffic, that is what real world studies are like. So my in-clinic experiences that I'll share uh, in the form of a study. So this is a RISE study that was presented at the Australian Diabetes Congress. And uh, this was about the improved glycemic control in people with type 2 diabetes. And they were initiated or switched to IDEG ASP from any antihyperglycemic treatment or even from insulins like basal insulins. And this was done across six countries. This was the basic design of the study. Uh, about 1,112 1, uh, adults with type 2 diabetes were recruited for this study. And as you can see, it was non-interventional, multi-centra, prospective primary data collection, and uh, visit frequency according to local standard of care. And six countries like Australia, India, Malaysia, Philippines, Saudi Arabia, and South Africa were uh, involved in this particular study and observation period of uh, about 26 to 36 weeks. So the primary endpoints that we are looking into was the change in the HbA1c from the baseline, and the secondary uh, outcomes that we are looking into were the number which achieved uh, HbA1c of 7% or less, which is considered a good glycemic control, uh, HbA1c less than the predefined target, change in the fasting glucose from the baseline, at the same time, uh, change in the insulin dose in terms of units and change in the body weight from the baseline, number of hypoglycemic events and a treatment discontinuation. The exploratory endpoints were resource utilization and HbA1c less than 7% without any incidences of hypoglycemia. So uh, overall subject disposition and what we want to em emphasize is 92% of the patients actually completed the study. This was the uh, baseline characteristics. Uh, the mean age was about 58.6. Male to female ratio was 53 to 46. Body weight, mean body weight was about 79.5. Duration of diabetes was 13.3 years. And mean BMI was about 29.2. Fasting at baseline mean was about 198. And baseline HbA1c mean was 9.8. So uh, these were the baseline uh, anti-diabetic agents uh, that they were on when uh, they were initiated on uh, ITEC ASP. OEDs only was 35%. Basal only was 21%. GLP 8%. Uh, basal bolus was 13%. And premix 21.9%. What were the reasons that were considered by the physicians uh, a reasonable uh, cause for starting ITEC uh, ASP treatment? And majority of them thought that uh, the reason was to control the glycemia better. Uh, a handful of them also thought that lowering the uh, hypoglycemia was uh, the reason why they should be starting them on IDEG ASP. Flexibility of the dosing regime, fewer injections, all of these were the considerations they had in mind while switching them to IDEG ASP. What was the percentage that were using once versus twice? IDEG ASP, so about 52% was using it once daily versus about 47.6% were using it twice daily. These were the changes uh, in HbA1c from the baseline. You see the overall change was about 1.4%. If you look at Australia, it was about 0.8%. In India, it was close to 1.6%. Uh, the maximum was at Saudi Arabia, but there was a drop in HbA1c of about 2%. So significant reduction was seen in the mean uh, HbA1c from the baseline, and this was consistent across the countries. Again, uh, if you look, there was significant reduction uh, across all subgroups, depending, it didn't matter what they were using at baseline, whether they were on OEDs or whether they were on basal insulin, GLP-1 uh, receptor analogs, even 
when they were taking basal bolus or premix, there was a significant drop in the HbA1c from the baseline. But the highest was in those who were taking about three or more OADs and still uncontrolled, there was a drop in about 2% uh, from the baseline. Similar change in the fasting glucose was there from the baseline. And uh, we saw that there was a drop in almost 52 uh, milligrams uh, per deciliter in Indian circumstances. Also, the non-severe hypoglycemic events, uh, we were comparing at the start of the uh, uh, treatment and at the end of the treatment. And we see that no matter what they were using at the baseline, whether they were on OADs, basal, GLP-1 receptor analogs, there was a significant drop in the number of non-severe hypoglycemic events with the introduction of IDIG acid. Similarly, if you're considering severe hypoglycemic events, and you look at the start of the treatment and at the end of the treatment, again, uh, there was a significant drop in the number of uh, severe hypoglycemic events uh, with the introduction of IDIG acid across uh, the board. So resource utilization, and uh, uh, if you talk about the self-reported outpatient visits or self-reported emergency room visits or self-reported work days missed, again, there was a significant decrease. You saw a 61% decrease in the resource utilization in terms of visiting the OPDs. And also there was a 90% drop in the self-reported work days missed with the introduction of IDEC acid. So the conclusions from this study was that um, IDEC ASP, so when, whenever you're switching to IDEC ASP, there was an effective drop in the HbA1c, effective drop in the fasting, improved safety outcomes, and better uh, resource utilization with the introduction of IDEC ASP. So um, ARISE complements available evidences to consider IDEC ASP and patients failing to achieve glycemic control, those with postprandial glucose spikes, as happens in Indian circumstances because of a higher representation of the carbohydrates in our meals. Patients at an increased risk of hypoglycemic events or nocturnal hypoglycemia. And nocturnal hypoglycemia is always a challenge because you know, that's the time when the patients are most vulnerable and least likely to seek help. So patients who benefit also are those who have reduced injection burden and less complex regimen and patients requiring flexibility in timing. Uh, so you can conveniently place it uh, once daily to initiate with, with the biggest meal of the day, for example. So now with the co-formulation in place, we have changes in the practice recommendations as comes from the RSSDI 2020. And now RSSDI recommends that in Indian circumstances, you should be considering a co-formulation like IDEG ASP to begin with. And insulin therapy should be considered for all patients failing to achieve glycemic targets on at least three OHPs. So ARISE uh, was the real uh, world evidence that I showed you, and I'll talk about my experience. And this was presented at ADA this year, and we were talking about the efficacy and safety of once daily fixed ratio co-formulation of degdudegaspert plus empelina uh, in post-discharge COVID-19 pneumonitis type diabetic patients who were treated uh, with dexamethasone during the inpatient stay. So these were patients who were uh, treated with dexamethasone. They were stable while, while they were discharged, but they were discharged on a full-on basal bolus regimen. So what we did see was the new patients who were, who were insulin naive to begin with, they did not do too well with the four injections of four pricks a day. So frequently they discontinued the insulin. And many times we saw that they were only taking the basal insulin and uh, th of course, they were not reaching the glycemia that was desired for them. So this was a single center study and uh, the data was uh, collected from 1st June to 31st December. And these were those individuals who were non-compliant with the basal bolus regime after discharge from the hospital. The total number was about 67 and the mean age was about 60. The BMI was 26. So after 14 days of discharge, what was seen was that 88% of the patients were non-compliant with the basal bolus therapy, and 100% of them failed to achieve the glycemic goals that was desired of them. So these patients non-compliant with basal bolus, when they were switched to a convenient once daily IDEG ASP with a 
uh, introduction of metformin and empelina combination, uh, they did really well in terms of compliance. And we also did see that there was a massive drop in the postprandial glucose to the tune of about 155 milligrams per deciliter. The fasting came down by about 118.7 at the end of the study. HbA1c drop was also very significant. And you can see it dropped down from initial about 10.7 mean to about 6.85, which was desired. And also the insulin dose, although was higher to begin with, uh, so they were either on once daily Vizodic or those who were not controlled were considered for twice daily. And the mean units uh, at the beginning of the uh, study was about 37.8. And when uh, the study was over, it was about 17 units. And there was 100% compliance to this regime with a zero episodes of severe hy hypoglycemia and nocturnal hypoglycemia. So significant reduction in the glycemic parameters with better compliance and improved safety with this particular combination. So in conclusion, what we can say is that switching to IDIG as plus OEDs is an efficacious and safe alternative to basal bolus regime. Post-discharge patients of COVID-19 uh, who were treated with uh, dexamethasone. So this was moderate to severe patients who needed ICU or uh, HU care. And I know that you would be treating similar patients in your day-to-day -day practice. And so this might be uh, sort of an experience that I wanted to share with you, which you can use in your clinical practice as well. So with this, thank you so much for your